Okay, should be live here. Things should be coming on here soon. Okay, there it is. We are up and going. So, how's everybody doing? Good morning, from New Brunswick. I'm from Pensacola. Again, whenever we do a live stream, it's nice to have people just say where you're from. That way, you know, if you can see somebody from your area, you can uh, get to talking to each other. From Great Britain, there's one, Wisconsin. Michigan, New Hampshire, Texas, Tex two from Texas there, Romania, New Jersey, Trinidad and Tobago, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Greenville, South Carolina, Florida, Nevada, Chicago, Michigan, Arkansas, Kansas, Texas. Texas, UK, Michigan. Great. Praise the Lord. Um, well, I guess we'll get started here. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Okay. So I thought I would um, do an interesting little study here today. Uh, we're going to be watching a Baptist preacher unnamed Baptist preacher. I wonder who it could be. And we're going to go through the scriptures and see if he's accurate, staying with the word of God, or if he's straying off into traditions of men. And I'll pause his sermon occasionally to make some comments on of my own. Um, just a little fun thing we're going to do today here. And then we'll get into some questions and answers after it's over. Um, Okay, Stephen Anderson is the first guest. Does anybody ha have any other guesses? Um, any guesses out there? Breaker? Stephen Anderson? Put your guesses in the comment section. Lawson, Kim? No. Spencer Smith, David Peacock, no. My evil twin? Close. Osteen? No. <laughs> He's not hard to refute. You just kind of, you know, just to take a look at the guy and it's, you know, MacArthur, no. And Osteen's not a Baptist preacher either. So, Creffler Dollar. <laughs> Your younger years. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Congratulations. You got it. Oops. All right. We are going to watch me in my younger years. And uh, I thought this would be an interesting way to play one of my older sermons where I could actually sit here and talk about it while it's playing. So let's uh, let's watch this now. And um, this is an old one. It was back, I think, 2013. If I remember correctly. So let's play it here. Yeah, 2013. Okay. Turn it on here, right? Okay. Can everybody hear it? What was played so far? Just make sure I have the audio correct and everything there. Okay, good. Um, how about that nice little suit and tie and everything else, you know? <laughs> nice uh, trimmed, thin beard and everything. Yeah, dressed to impress. So, yeah. And this was Country Chapel Baptist Church, Eldred, Pennsylvania. And um, 
thank you to everybody about the sound. Good. And um, yeah, I was a suit and tie wearing Baptist, the whole thing. And I did actually fill in for the pastor of this church, you know, a time or two, a couple times. So yeah, Sunday best. That's right. Yeah, the men in black, you know. Yeah, actually, I had it's funny because I used to wear sunglasses that you know clipped onto my glasses, and I'd wear a black tie once in a while. And I came into this one Baptist church at one time, and this this uh, greeter woman that was there, she said, "She said I thought you were a government agent." <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, let's continue here. We're going to talk tonight about a subject, uh, kind of a controversial subject among some people. I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here, uh, preaching a sermon tonight and also answering an email that I got. Um, those of you who don't know, if you aren't aware, I'm, I'm in an internet ministry, so I get all kinds of people from around the world. And had a brother in Sweden say, I have a talent for drawing weirdos, so <laughs> you'll see it in this email. You can turn your Bible right to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. At some point in time in your life as a Christian, you're probably going to run into somebody who is a Pentecostal charismatic. And um, one of their primary doctrines that they will focus on is the thing of speaking in tongues. Why? Well, because that's the easiest one to fake. If they say that they can heal, you know, well, take them to the hospital and say, heal that person right there. Yeah. They can't, you know. If they say, I can prophesy, I say, okay, tell me what's going to happen next week. They can't. Mm -hmm. You know, they're prophesying just, you know, you'll be making a lot of money soon or something. So, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit sarcastic with them because I deal with them and they're something else. But I made a video exposing this thing of speaking in tongues and showing that actually people in the occult, when they have devils come into them, can actually speak in unknown tongues. That's why you have to be very careful about just letting yourself go and just wanting the spirit to come into you and speak through your mouth. That's very dangerous. Very dangerous. I'll read the part of the email here. She says, Dear Brian, I am a 54-year-old Christian woman in Indiana. I came across your video on YouTube about the danger of tongues. I agree with you that some people take it or others may be possessed by devils. I believe there is a third alternative and that it can be a genuine gift from God. I believe that God has given me that gift. More than 25 years ago, I was attending a United Methodist church. My faith in Jesus and the Bible was very weak. Then I heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues on Christian TV. Late one night, I was watching a Christian TV program, and a man invited anyone who wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to repeat a prayer. I did, and suddenly I was able to speak out fluently in a language that I do not know. Sounds a lot like French. I went from being a doubter to fully believing in Jesus and the Bible. If it was from the devil, it sure backfired. I've been able to pray in tongues at will since that day. It resides within me. I speak in two different languages now. I'm not faking it. They sound like real languages to me, and other people have told me the same thing. It is not ecstatic at all for me. I don't have to work myself up at all to do it, and it doesn't give me any type of a rush. I often pray in tongues when I am driving my car. I in no way believe that a Christian must speak in tongues in order to be saved. I believe that you are a sincere follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and that we are brother and sister of the Lord. I don't know about that, but what we're going to talk about is, was there a gift of speaking in tongues in the Bible? Yes, that's legitimate. Okay, but I want to focus in on something in particular here and kind of debunk the modern speaking in tongues, the thing of praying in tongues. Is there any support in that for, is, is there any support for that, excuse me, in scripture? And uh, she, I asked her that, and she quoted this verse in another email, which I'm not going to read. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12, we'll start there. Okay, it says here, even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Okay, I want you to notice a couple of things here. First of all, there in 
verse uh, 14. Notice Paul does not say, for when I pray in an unknown tongue. He says, if. Okay? That's very important there. He's not saying you should. He's saying, if I do pray in an unknown tongue, it's unfruitful. He's actually rebuking the thing of them saying that they're praying in tongues. Doesn't make any sense. Look at verse 15. What is it then if I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also? This lady said that she prays in a, in a voice and she doesn't know what it means. A tongue that doesn't, she, I have no idea what I'm saying. That's not how you're supposed to pray. Amen. You're supposed to understand what you're praying for. Amen. We're going to look at some scriptures to prove that, to back that up. Uh, turn over to James, the book of James, chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 2 is where I'm going to start out. And again, most of the charismatics, they will stick in 1 Corinthians 14, well, 12 through 14. That's one of their favorite places. And we'll go back to Acts chapter 2. They don't do much comparing Scripture with Scripture. You need to watch out for that. People taking verses completely out of their context and not comparing Scripture with Scripture. But here in James chapter 4, verse 2, it says... Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. How do you know if you're praying in an unknown tongue? How do you know that you're not disobeying that verse? Yeah, Say, so I don't know what I'm saying. Well, then how do you know you're saying the right thing? problem. Turn back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Here we're going to see the Lord Jesus' instructions on uh, praying. So far so good. <laughs> Can't get him as a heretic quite yet, so we'll just keep listening here. But just uh Funny looking back at myself all those years ago and thinking, oh man, the whole church building thing. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of stories of who all was in the crowd that night. Um, I had some people ticked off. but uh, So, you know, to everybody out there that says that Brian hides behind a camera and he's afraid to speak in front of people, never preached in a church. Again, if you're new to this ministry, yes, I have preached in church buildings in front of people. I've dealt with people yelling at me afterwards and people angry and, you know, getting up and walking out. <laughs> I've dealt with it all. Good night. That's why I don't mess with it anymore. But uh, let's continue. All right. Matthew chapter six, verse five. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things we have need of before ye ask him. Okay, uh, I didn't see Jesus saying anything there about not understanding what you're praying. You're to understand what you're praying for. That's very important. Okay, and that's interesting too there because he says that people that use vain repetitions, he calls them heathen. Mm -hmm. now watch out for vain repetitious prayers that people pray that really doesn't mean anything. You know, you should talk to God as he is your father if you're saved. Right. You know, that's very important. Turn next to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Okay, it says here, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Again, how can you pray if you don't understand what you're saying? How can you thank the Lord? And, and you know, if, if you just rattle off a bunch of gibberish, you know, how are you going to have peace from that? You know? And I'll tell you something, there are times in your life as a Christian that you're going to have some real trials that you're going through, and you're going to pray and pray and pray, and the Lord will give you peace if you talk to him for a while, because you got the thing talked out. It's like that with family members. You know, husband and wife have an argument, and what do you do? You talk it out. You know, would it make sense for one of the people to, to sit there and go, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> you know? Well, we, we talked it out in an unknown tongue. <laughs> you say, that's crazy. You know, we don't do that. Why would you do it with God? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But I've heard this argument. They'll say, but yes, but the Holy Spirit can speak through you. You know, they'll, they'll say he can make groanings, you know, and things when you can't. Go look at that verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. I'll tell you what. When you deal with these people, and I've dealt with them for years now, you, you have to go to the scriptures. Because these people will twist the scriptures to just unbelievable contortions of the Bible that, they, that they'll make. And, you know, you actually read the verse, and it's it says something totally opposite of what they're trying to get through. It's just incredible. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there are times when you have something that's bothering you so much you don't even know the right words for it. What the Holy Spirit does, he will know. He knows the right things to say. But if they try to use this one here and say, see, the Holy Spirit speaking through you and he intercedes and that's what's going on. No, it says groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay? So, again, it's not an unknown tongue that the Holy Spirit somehow speaks through you. But um, she claims here her impartation of the gift of speaking in tongues. <clears throat> Late one night, I was watching a Christian TV program, and a man invited anyone who wanted to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit to repeat a prayer. Now, obviously, there were no TVs in the book of Acts. So that's an issue there. But uh, secondly, did anybody ever pray to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Let's look what the Bible has to say about that. Acts chapter 2 is the most famous passage of all the speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Okay, it says here, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there, appeared, uh, excuse me, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men, or devout Jews. No, I'm sorry. Without men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Were there any unknown tongues present here? No. no. And if you read the next couple of verses there, verses 7 through 11, the tongues, the languages are listed. There are no unknown tongues in Acts chapter 2. And yet the charismatics, they'll try to take you over here and say these are unknown tongues. They'll say they spoke in unknown tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. doesn't say that. The word unknown tongues does not appear in this chapter. They'll lie to you. Again, if you don't have your Bible with you, if you don't know your Bible, they'll deceive you. And a lot of, a lot of new you know, baby Christians will go into this charismatic call and they'll get deceived because they don't have a Bible. Okay. Uh, turn next to, and by the way, did anybody pray for the gift there? No. No. Came upon them. Turn to the next instance of speaking in tongues in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10. Speaking in tongues in the book of Acts actually only appears three times. Acts chapter 10, we're going to start with verse 34 to get into context. 
And it says here, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Okay? So he's preaching there, and, it's, and there's the gospel is starting to go to the Gentiles now, not just solely to the Jews. But jump down to uh, verse 44. It says here, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that which heard the word, and they of the circumcision were, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, and prayed they him to tarry certain days. Again, did anybody pray a prayer to receive the gift? No. no. Peter didn't say, okay, now, you know, every head bowed, every eye closed, we're going to pray this prayer, and you're going to get the gift of tongues. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. No. Interesting, too, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with tongues before they were baptized, too. Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. But something else that's also <laughs> interesting in the book of Acts, every time the tongues are spoken, the real gift of tongues, Jews are present. Why? Well, because the Jews require a sign. That was the purpose of those early sign gifts that were given there. When Israel as a nation rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, their promised Messiah, then the sign gifts went away. Okay? And they say, well, you know, I had a guy say, well, I don't believe that. I, I believe I have the gift of healing. I said, meet me at the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, you know, it's tempting the Lord and stuff like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> now we'll go to the, the last one in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 19. See here another time when they speak in tongues. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. You just stop there for a minute. You cross reference that and go back. That was John the Baptist's baptism. Okay, he was preaching in Judea and in Jerusalem. <coughs> These were Jews. Okay, verse four. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. Did they pray a prayer? No. So again, you know, this, this thing, oh, I prayed a prayer. I was watching late night TV. I prayed a prayer, and I got the gift. There's no scripture for that. Okay? Don't fall for that thing. Okay? So what is Paul trying to say then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14? What's really going on there? Turn back to 1 Corinthians 14. We're going to see what he's trying to say here. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. It says here, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. Okay, did Paul speak in tongues? Yes. Look at verse 19. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In other words, if you're going to get mad and act like a little brat, you know, okay, go ahead. But understand this and act like a man, is what Paul's saying. Okay? That's the way it is. There's no point in standing up and speaking in tongues if people can't understand you. 
Okay? A child can stand up and testify for Jesus Christ, and you get more out of it than some charismatic standing up there and preaching an hour-long service in the tongue you can't understand. Okay, it's ridiculous. And there is there is absolutely no scripture at all to back up this thing of praying in unknown tongues. You know, there's no point in that. I mean, how do you know what you're saying to the Lord? You know, when you pray to the Lord, you're asking him for your first of all, you're offering thanksgiving to him. And you're praying about things in your life that are important, and problems that you're having, and whatever. It should be a very close personal relationship between you and your heavenly father. Why would you try to mess that up? See? And, and you know, there again, I mean, that's a whole other thing I can get into, but I won't get into that right now. But one other thing I want to cover here in this 1 Corinthians 14, um, just want to take this as I'm here. Verse 26, jump down there. So this is another thing that's very prevalent among charismatics, the whole modern house church movement. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation, that all things be done unto edify? Now, another thing that is very prevalent is they'll say that everybody should be doing things. So, you know, guys over here, you can stand up and sing, and you guys back there, you can stand up and pray. Over here, you can prophesy and read the Bible over here. I mean, they teach that. Again, I've run into people that say that. And what do you have? Confusion. Okay? Paul, again, he's rebuking that. He's saying you're not supposed to all be standing up and doing everything. It's all to be done decently and in order. You know, this whole chapter here, he is rebuking that. He's not saying this is Bible doctrine. This is what you're supposed to do. You know, it, it just... When you have a church that goes to the books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians and they get their major doctrine out of that and they ignore everything else, that's a problem. Yeah, because the church at Corinth was the most carnal of all the churches. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't want to be careful with that. But you say, where does this woman go? She go to some kind of Pentecostal church? She says here, I am now a member of a separate Baptist church. You think this stuff is going to come to the Baptist churches? Uh huh. Oh yeah. The charismatic movement. I, I don't have the exact quote with with me right now, but back in the early 1900s when it was really getting underway, they were saying a lot of the, the the bigger men back then, the theologians and things, were saying if we don't stop this, it's going to destroy all the churches. And guess what? It's destroying all the churches. They were the ones that brought the rock music into the church. They were the ones that really were pushing the new versions. You know, no more dress standards. I mean, just everything is falling apart. And you look, you trace it back. No more dress standards. See, when I'm sticking with the Bible, everything was fine. Let's see, to impress the Baptists there, I had to do the throw in the little Baptist thing. It's going to destroy the churches. No more dress standards. Stinking heretic. <laughs> see what i'm saying here that's the danger of the church buildings you get into these things and all of a sudden you start to elevate tradition above scripture there are no dress standards other than just modest apparel but there's no what i'm wearing there there's no scripture for that there's none a pulpit like that which is ironic because that pulpit that i'm standing behind right there it came out of a jewish synagogue which is kind of interesting and no joke it's from a jewish synagogue and somebody carved KJV 1611 into the front right right there. It's not even from a, a, you know, built for a Christian church. It was Jewish. So kind of an interesting thing there. But uh, I'll just tell this little story quick here. Um, there was a guy there, this really high educated, you know, pastor of some big church. And he came to visit because his, I think, uh, daughter or something, I think she was going there. And he came to visit, you know, his PhD, THD, all these big earned degrees. And he's sitting uh, this, you can see kind of right here, the top of this head right there, uh, the blonde hair. That was a woman. I think he was sitting over a little bit, you know, to the wall, closer to the wall. And he wouldn't even look at me after a while. I was ripping on different things. I guess he was getting angry. And he's just sitting there sideways in the Puget Stone like this. And, you know, and I'd say something kind of funny. He'd go. <laughs> and smirk and uh he's trying to you know intimidate me i guess or something because he wouldn't even make eye contact with me 
you know, oh, you peasant you or something, you know. So, yeah. Um, so, anyhow, let's continue. It goes back to the charismatics, back to that charismatic boom. Be very careful. Like I said, you will run into these people before long. You'll run into them. Watch out. Um, but is there a danger in it? James chapter 3 is where we'll end, right? James chapter 3. Is there a danger in, in saying, well, you know, maybe it's okay to speak in tongues, maybe it's all right. I want to show you that there's a very serious danger in that. Okay, James chapter 3, starting at verse 3. It says here, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that, uh, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven by uh, fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set upon fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Okay. Had to kick a little devil here in the uh, comments. Oops, not that one. This one. Um, if one denies the hokey trinity, I don't know what the hokey trinity is. It, do the hokey pokey, I guess. Turn yourself around. Uh, if one denies the, I think he said holy there. I know I'm being funny. Then he is by definition a heretic. Okay, uh, Fred, um, tell you what, I will give you $1,000, send you $1,000 if uh, you can give me one verse of scripture that says that. One verse of scripture that says, if I deny the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, then uh, I'm a heretic. <laughs> okay. And we'll, we'll come back to questions and answers at the end here, you know, for anybody that just started to tune in. Let's finish up uh, Baptist Boys sermon over here. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Perfect description of the modern charismatic movement. Do you need to get control of your tongue? Mm -hmm. As a Christian? And by the way, if you uh, look up there in verse 2, here in James chapter 3, it says, For many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to drive the whole body. You know where sin really starts? Right here. It's connected to the brain, you know. And the Bible says, too, you know, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know. If you can get control of this mouth here, you'll be able to control the rest of your body. Amen. Now, why would you say, I'm going to let a spirit come in and just use this however it wants? Yeah. Mm. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Avoid this whole charismatic movement like the plague. I can tell you that. And, you know, I'll just say this in closing, an interesting thought. You have somebody say, well, I think that speaking in tongues is for today. Okay, well, here's an experiment that you can do then. Get in an airplane and fly over to Jerusalem and get out and see if it works. Okay? <laughs> the book of Acts, they were speaking to Jews. Okay? Go over and see if the Lord starts speaking through you, the Holy Spirit starts speaking through you in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's if you want to believe in the legitimate gift of speaking in tongues, that's what would have to happen. Mm 
Yeah. Okay, it's a sign gift given for the conversion of the Jews. Mm -hmm. It's not some kind of a thing that you can do here in America and you know do all the things that they do. <laughs> so, like I said, watch out for that this fake movement. Okay, don't be deceived by it. You know, this gift of speaking in the unknown tongues thing, it's there's no scriptural basis for it. So that's gonna be it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your word. Uh, we would like to close a sermon that way, Lord, because without your word, we would be just in blindness. We wouldn't know what's right and what's wrong. But, uh, Lord, your word is so clear and so plain, and your Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. And, uh, Lord, there's there's a lot of evil people out there that, that want to destroy Bible-believing churches. And uh, they're dwindling, Lord. There's, there's less and less destroy Bible believing churches <laughs> uh, they're dwindling Lord there's less and less of them uh, it's not there is no such thing as a church building in the New Testament but see when you're in church buildings you have to cover up that fact I knew better okay I was doing house church stuff before I was doing this I knew better I started coming back to it you know and I I'll compromise and I get the worship of man thing again and what a whole brother is such a good sermon oh things uh. it's out there and, I, and so lord i just pray that that uh, everyone here would stay in your word and, uh, so that they would not be deceived and i just uh, pray lord that we would all focus on eternal things this week and um, seek to do something for you with our lives and i pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. 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 Brian, see if anybody has any questions. Anybody have any questions? That was the pastor Bruce Ireland that asked that said that. By the way. <laughs> wow so impressive right <laughs> uh yeah so but I, before we get to the question and answer thing i have to show one other thing um this thing here somebody in the comments let me know about this this was pretty cool i thought um let me close this thing down here. Hold on. Close the window down. Uh, down in um, the Falklands, the Falkland Islands or whatever, somebody put this thing here in the bathroom. Somebody made that. I have no idea which one of you did that, but I think it's really cool. Um, this picture, there's you go to the Street View thing. And I saw in the comments, this guy said, Does, is anybody else here because of the sign in the bathroom on the in the Falkland Islands? And I thought, and I said, what? Yeah, I responded. He said, yeah, go to the street view of Falkland Islands near this, this motel thing and whatever else. And you'll see it, Born Again Barbarian. It's right there. And then you look down there on the floor, too. <laughs> Born Again Barbarian YouTube. So I thought, that's a pretty cool idea. I like that. But uh, then you can go back to the uh, street view there. And uh, it's funny, it's the Malvina house right there. You click on the Malvina house thing, or I guess you do the little street view thing like that, and you go to it, and it takes you to the bathroom in this place, and there it is. So that's how you find it. But the Falkland Island thing there, Christ Church Cathedral, I thought that was interesting put my link to me there <laughs> not far from that um but stanley there on the falkland islands which is off the coast of south america so no idea who did that but thank you i think that's pretty neat very creative way of doing things so um anyhow uh i guess i'll stop sharing here
Heffenhanger is a heretic. Don't listen to this wicked man. He is leading many to damnation. If you don't believe in the Holy Trinity, you'll go to hell. Uh, get up there and God will say, yeah, I forgot to put it in the Bible, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Um, another one from him here. The KJV is not an A inerrant. That is a lie. Well, you know what the funny thing is? Um, oops. I guess you've been hidden now. Um, so where's the thing at there? Block user. Bye-bye, stupid. Uh, King James Bible Believing. Here's the standard. It's not Denlinger's a heretic. Call this book a heretic. All right, if you're into the whole Trinity thing, the word Trinity is not in here. The concept Trinity is not in here either. There are no three different, three separate persons. That's foreign to scripture. There's no divine essence. That's women's perfume. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll get to some questions here. Uh, why is pleading the blood of Jesus wrong? Because it's witchcraft. You're bending, shaping, changing reality. First John 1 8. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one one with another, I think is how it's supposed to be. But and the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, his son. You know what? I need to look that up. Um, just to make sure I I don't know if you have that right. John 1 1 John 1 8. Something doesn't sound right with me. Yeah, okay, you're not using the King James Bible. That's problem number one. Um, tell you what I'm going to need to do, share screen again. Uh, let's do it this way. Okay, now I'll put my software thing over here. Just maximize this, I guess. Okay, um, you can't really see it though. Uh, okay, I'll just do it this way then. First John one seven. Sorry, this is taking me here a couple minutes. I'll put it in the comments. Okay, there. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. It cleanses from sin. It does not give power to answer special prayers. Okay, so you have to use scripture um, and not just the opinions of, opinions of man. Okay. Uh, why isn't the book of Enoch in the King James Version? Because it's not inspired scripture. It's got a bunch of really weird stuff in it that contradicts scripture. Just like the apocryphal books or the deuterocanonical books that the Catholic Church puts in. The original King James Bible back in 1611 had the apocryphal books between the Old and New Testament, not as part of, part of the inspired scripture like the Catholic Bibles do. Um, so... Uh, what brand of Camu Camu vitamin C do you recommend? Um, I just go to eBay. Uh, I'm trying to think of the brand Tropical Paradise brand or something, I think. Um, so, okay. Do you, do you recommend Cambridge KJV over Oxford? I don't think you've made a video about that. No, I've, I've said about it. Um, this is a Cambridge King James Bible. Right down there, it's all worn off now, but you can kind of see it, the Cambridge right there. Um, I do recommend Cambridge. I think it's better with the spellings and things that it has. Um, question, are there any street preachers on YouTube that you would recommend? No, I, I don't really think of, that there are any. Um, I, I haven't watched them enough. The problem is if I recommend them, then people say, oh, then you recommend you believe exactly what they believe and whatever. No, just check everybody out with the
the King James Bible. That's the whole thing with it. Um, can you be, can you just be with your family at home and consider that church? Yes, absolutely. Um, church is not some kind of a thing, you know, where you just, unless you have 90 people going there or 100 people or, you know, 500 people, there's no number given. Um, I mean, if you're just by yourself, you're still part of the church of Jesus Christ. You don't somehow become disconnected from it. Uh, fellowshipping with other believers is a wonderful thing. Um, Question. The book of Joshua is mentioned in Joshua 10, verse 13. I don't read the Apocrypha, but why is it mentioned in the KJV? Uh, I think that I'm not, it's not one of my real strong things that I've studied, but I'm pretty sure that the word Jasher just means something else in Hebrew. It doesn't mean this actual book of Jasher thing. What does Paul mean in 2 Corinthians 12, 16? Second Corinthians 12, verse 16. Um, but be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. He's being sarcastic is what he's being. They're accusing him. Actually, false prophets are accusing Paul of some things, but he's being sarcastic with them. Is water baptism necessary for salvation? No, it isn't. I didn't go to church today, first time and attended this live stream, one of the best. Well, praise the Lord. Um, you don't go to church. Understand that in scripture. There's nobody that went to church. You are the church. So it's an important uh, thing there. Um, question, can you make a video on a Pentecostal nun? My letter, do you need me to send it again? Uh, brother, it's, it's in a whole pile of other things I need to do and check into and whatever else. Um, I have a, a very big study I'm working on right now. Um, this morning I had plumbing issues to fix here. Uh, I'm, I do a lot of different things, so I'll get two things when I can. Um, what is your opinion of the book of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Never really studied it much. Don't really know a whole lot about it. Just kind of looked and said, not really part of scripture. So whatever. Um, I, I'm not a master of every single category out there. I do my best to answer people's questions. Um, is the KJV reference edition by Henderson okay? I don't know. I've, I've not done any reviews on that one. Okay, is it possible to do a study showing what a Bible believer should have highlighted uh, or outlined in their scriptures to further strengthen them personally? Well, that's going to be a personal thing for you. I, I can't answer that question. Um, my favorite verses might not really mean that much to you because my experiences in life as a Christian are different than yours. So I think that there are certain key scriptures. I did have an audio sermon on that many years ago some scriptures that you really need to know and you can highlight those certainly okay brian what do you think of devices to read the bible um in terms of i'm assuming you mean like electronic devices or whatever else or different things um i'd be careful with some of that i think it's best to stick with the paper king james bible it's not going to be changed there's no Mandela effect, by the way. My wife and I debunked that. It was that whole thing. Witches came up with that. I saw people saying about in the comments in my last video, you know, well, how, why has lion been changed to wolf in the King James Bible? It's not been changed. Okay. It, no, no word of the King James Bible has been changed by, you know, drug up, drugged out hippies at CERN or something. That's nonsense. Okay. Do not fall for that ever. It's ridiculous. Um... Do you think it is okay to read the Apocryphal 
for its historical value, or should I avoid it since it has false doctrine? And I know for sure that it is not 100. That is 100% not inspired. Um, yeah, read what you want. I read catechisms. I read Catholic books, you know, Council of Trent, Second Vatican Council. I read a lot of stuff. Okay, I just understand it's not scripture. So if you want to read the Apocrypha, well, go ahead. Not a problem. <clears throat> Question. Recently stopped doing Bible studies with some family. Family often, they wouldn't remember what we went over. They still act lost continually. Should I feel guilty? Non-participants are angry as well. Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, oops, hit the wrong one there. Um, yeah, if people aren't listening and things that's not making sense, well, then try something else or whatever, another way that they might understand it. But, okay, that was a question. Is it my responsibility to persuade the church members of the Baptist church I attend to come out of her? Um, you can talk to some of them, but most just aren't going to get it. Uh, it's not your responsibility, though. Question, was there a similar experience with you and your family? Um yeah. Yeah, I could say yes on that. What books are you planning on writing? Um, well, I'd like to do one specifically on the glory of the Lord. I'd like to um, do one on this new subject that I'm really doing a lot of in-depth study on right now. Um, there's a bunch of ones that I have. Uh, I'd like to do something on the, uh, you know, the pokey. <laughs> You're not allowed to say on YouTube. Uh, vaccines. Um, so, question. I found out yesterday that the Russians released the tsunami sub. People have been having dreams about tsunamis for years. What is your opinion? No idea. Haven't studied it. Question. Have you heard, read or heard of the book Demonology written by King James himself? I've heard he wrote something about demons or something like that, but I have never read it. <clears throat> Question. My mom is a pastor and I tried to tell her the truth, but she angrily rejected it. Should I give up? Uh, well, a man that is an heretic for the first and second admonition reject. Um, so, yeah, you basically just say, I tried to talk to you and you don't want to hear it. So that's whatever. Have you seen Peter of Peter Ruckman debating Gary Hudson on the KJV only? Yeah, I have it on VHS tape going way back. Um, Romans one twenty three does it happen today? Let me find the verse. <clears throat> Make sure I have this right. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men, man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. People changing the glory of the uncorruptible God to a, an image type of thing? Yeah, absolutely. That's what the Trinity is. Absolutely. If my wife believes in saints and does the candle thing, can that bring bad to the whole family? Bad spirits and whatever else? Yes, I wouldn't mess with it. I'd say, uh, yeah, you know, Catholic saints are, are devils in my opinion. Where can I get a KJV? Um, you can get them pretty much. There's a lot of places. Uh, Cambridge King James Bibles are the best. Um, I have a whole uh, video. Uh, who makes the best uh, King James Bible? 
local church Bible publishers is good church Bible publishers. They're connected to the whole Hiles cult thing, uh, which is a problem, but um, they sell good King James Bibles. Uh, but I, I do have a video if you want to watch the video the where the best KJV Bibles, best KJV Bibles or something, I think it's called. <clears throat> Question, what happened to Rumble? Um, it's For now, I just have my videos. It's set that any video that happens here on YouTube will be uploaded to the Rumble channel. Um, I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens with YouTube. See what we're going to do. <clears throat> do you have your ministry info available on a tract, or do I just write your ministry name on a card to pass out? May I do this, Brother Brian? Yeah, you can write it as much as you want. That's fine. Um, I don't have any kind of tracks right now. I had a brother making tracks for me. I don't know if I have any in here right now. We've been trying to pass them out and things. Just, yeah, here's one. I do have some in here yet. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice is giving out on me here. Here's a track the brother wrote for me. Just a regular trifold track. Did a real good job on it. And um, and then on the very back, he has down at the bottom, he has the uh, ministry uh, website there. Come on, focus. There it is. You can see it down there. <clears throat> yeah. Here's the link to the video. Thank you, Chantre, for that. That's the link to the video. You can watch that if you want to see the best KJV Bibles. Um, so. Uh, question, do you have a video on the Holy Trinity? I have a whole playlist on the Holy Trinity and why it's not in Scripture and everything else. You can look up um, <clears throat> the whole thing about the Trinity or Godhead doctrine or whatever else on my channel, and you'll come to quite a few of those. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, question. A lot of events happening around the world over the past few months. Most recently, the assassin, assassination in Japan and the Boris step down. Any thoughts on the progress towards a new order? <clears throat> um, the way that the whole thing works, they want you to believe that everything is timed out. It isn't. Um, they, The devil's people, yes, they have they plan things, they do war gaming, they kind of, let's try this, let's try that, but they have to wait and see what the reaction of the people is going to be to that. So certainly these things are all part of leading to the new world order, the Antichrist kingdom that's coming, but uh, how does it all tie in? I don't know. And quite frankly, they don't know. All they can do is it's just sort of like a deck of cards. They can play a card and then watch what the other person does. They, the elites, global elites, whatever you want to call them, they'll do certain things and then they will um, see how it works out. So, <clears throat> use honey to help through. Yeah, it would right now, but it's over that way, a couple rooms over. So, can't uh, just having something to drink probably would help right now, but <clears throat> some water or whatever I'm saying. Okay. Okay, I'm probably missing. <clears throat> Does your wife teach women how to make modest dresses or make any of your healthy 
recipes available. Um, <clears throat> no, she doesn't do either one. Um, a lot of the, the dressmaking stuff and everything, she's she has uh, different people make them for her through Etsy and whatever, um, but she has the materials to study how to make it, whatever, you know, her own, but uh, she focuses mostly on, uh, you know, the work that she has to do for the ministry. <clears throat> Next time, have something to drink ready when doing live streams at Chattel. Yeah, I usually don't have a problem with my throat. I don't really drink much when I'm talking. I, I don't know what's hitting me. Maybe there's people putting curses on me right now in the in the comments or, or the, that are watching or something like that. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. So, um, Okay. Question. Do you have an opinion on the Christian rapper Bryson Gray? Worth checking out if you have not heard of him. Uh, Christian rapper is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, rap music is not a something that you can take and make a Christian. Um, so. Okay. Question, Romans 3.30, why does Paul say by faith by faith for the Jew and through faith for the Gentile? Good question. I don't know. I'd have to study that to be able to answer that. Question, did Nebuchadnezzar go to Abraham's bosom or hell when he died? Um, that's, that's a debatable thing. Um, I would say that he probably went to Abraham's bosom. Towards the end of his life, it looks like he turned towards the Lord. I think he even called him my God at, at some point. Okay, trying to see questions here. Sorry if I'm missing anybody. What do you think about the Freemasons? Um, terrible thing to get into. We're not supposed to be doing things in secret and whatever else. Um, they worship Lucifer. They they, you know, claim that they don't worship Lucifer, um, but they do. Uh, the lower down ones don't really know what they're part of, but uh, a lot of them don't know what they're part of. But the point is, they are Luciferians. So. And ultimately, yeah, they do go back to the uh, Vatican as well. It's just another one of the fraternal organizations that the Vatican came out with and controls. <clears throat> Question, would all fast-paced worship music be, can be worship of the flesh? All, are drum beats something God would condemn? I'm trying to find a good balance in the music I listen to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get into it. It's I'm not a musician. I'm not a. This isn't a, a huge thing for me. But you get into something that the rhythm. You know, you have three elements to music. You have harmony, melody, rhythm. The rhythm is lines up with the flesh. Harmony and melody are lining up with uh, soul and spirit. But when you have, you know, all three elements have to be there. You can't have music without rhythm. But when rhythm overtakes harmony and melody, that's when you start to have problems. Rap music does it. Rock music does it. Heavy metal definitely does it. Um, a lot of that stuff. It elevates the flesh. And that's why you see it with car commercials. They'll use a strong beat. They use it with, you know, I mean, anything it's bad, any kind of a bar or whatever else. They want that driving rhythm there. It gets, you know, the adrenaline up. And 
you know, if you go into war, they're they're beating drum rhythms to get the the you know the heart rate up, the adrenaline up, and it's dangerous to get into that stuff. So um, there's a book I have. This book right here is probably one of the best ones on the issue of rock music and rap music and everything else inside rock music. It gets into a lot of things like that. So, um, yeah. It's just something that you have to study. I mean, I was a hardcore um, heavy metal guy, rock guy. I even listened to rap for a little while. So I'm not some kind of a old fuddy-duddy or whatever you want to call it. You know, that's some guy that just never listened to anything like that. I was very much into secular music as well as quote unquote christian rock and other stuff so okay just seeing this one does biden have jesuit ties yes absolutely he has a i think an honorary degree from a jesuit university and his son i think went to one of the jesuit schools as well so yes he does have ties to the jesuits certainly um and kamala harris actually did a lot of her studies at um the uh, what's the one out there right near gene kim his little catholic cult building that he goes to santa clara university yeah so yeah she has ties to the jesuits as well a uh, question a while back i had done a study on children and youth rather and rather they go at the rapture or not i know you say you believe they do what scripture would you use for that side of belief well i think that they do um i can't teach it as doctrinal yes they definitely go up at the rapture um i just think because of the thing of um they're not they can't be condemned as saved or lost you know because they're not to the age where they can really understand it um so i do have a video on that if you want to learn more about that um What's your thoughts on the firmament and flat earth? Well, the Bible teaches about a firmament. That's pretty plain. It says that, but the Bible never says the earth is flat in those exact words. So there's debate either way back and forth. I have not done the study to really um, intelligently comment on it either way. And I just say, oh, you know, whatever. The thing that worries me about the flat earth thing is that people get really carried away with it. And it just everything becomes about flat earth. It's not supposed to be that important. God's word, the authority of scripture is the most important thing that there is because without the authority of scripture, well, then it's my opinion versus your opinion. So that's my take on that. Um, how can an early 17th version have any significance? Um, well, when did Jesus come to the earth? That was thousands of years ago, 2000 years ago. Well, how could that have any significance? I remember there's actually a rock song. Um, it says, but, uh, but what a man did 2,000 years ago doesn't mean that much to me today. I forget even who sang that song. But I remember Let It Go or something like this was the way the song went. Um, relevance or significance is not determined by it has to be within the last 20 years and then it has significance. Um, this is the greatest Bible that's ever showed up on the earth. The authorized version, King James Bible. Um, and still relevant to today. In fact, it's even more relevant because the prophecies that are there in this book for the end times, um, they're coming to pass. And this old, old, you know, 400 plus year old King James Bible said that there would be a mark of the beast in the right hand or in the forehead. And no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Well, in was questioned for many years. People go, how does that make sense? We don't question it anymore because we now have you know, implantable microchips and things like that. So yes, it's quite significant for today. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Brian, I'm over overwhelmed how Muslims praise Allah. Have you ever witnessed to a Muslim? Um, all false cults are very devout and very fervent. They get really devout, in fact, because they're working their way to their heaven or whatever that they go to. Um, uh, no, I have never witnessed to a Muslim person. I've never met one. Just the areas I've been, just there aren't many Muslims around.
Okay. <clears throat> um, question, how do you encourage yourself in these times, despite being more dedicated to God Bible study and feeling extremely vexed spiritually? It's hard. It is hard. And I'll tell you what, um, the Lord, when he was here on the earth, uh, he spent time in the Garden of Gethsemane. How spiritual was that? Well, it wasn't overly spiritual. He wasn't preaching the gospel to anybody at out there but it says that they often resorted thither so they went there not just once or twice they went there a lot and sometimes you just need to get out in god's creation and just get away from all the nuttiness of everything and just look at the birds and the, the butterflies and the whatever out there and just think those little creatures of god are out there that god's created them they don't care about what russia's doing or about the federal reserve or about you know inflation or the rising interest rates they're they're looking for bugs or worms or whatever you know the birds and seeing that how they can fly through the trees and sometimes it's good just to get away just unplug from everything and just say you know just i don't want to hear about it just walk away from it for a while and you know a little bit of rest relaxation and then you can go back to fighting again that's what you have to do i mean there's times that i'm just i have to get this done i have to get this thing, study done and i have to answer these people and i have to do all this and I just have to say, you know what? Not only do I need to go out and go canoeing, kayaking, bicycle riding, hiking, whatever, but my wife and my son need it as well. Um, so you just have to learn that balance as a Christian. Okay, I'm way down here. Are you aware that King James Stuart was of Scotland before taining England? Absolutely. King James the sixth of Scotland and the first of England. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up here. How should I deal with an atheist co-worker who constantly blasphemes God and attacks the KJV Bible? He refuses to acknowledge any kind of science that shows evolution is impossible. Very simple. Answer the fool according to his folly. To simply say, okay, so you don't believe the King James Bible. You've made that clear to me, correct? Yes. Okay. Can I ask you some questions about your beliefs? Okay. Um, do you judge 100% by the rules of evolutionary science? And he'll say yes and say, okay, I've done this with atheists. It works really well. Um, yes, I judge completely by the rules of science, evolutionary science. Okay. Did Adolf Hitler do anything wrong with exterminating useless eaters? Judging purely by evolutionary standards. Well, uh, uh, you know, they usually don't want to answer that. Um, that's how I would handle that. Just answer them according to their folly. Question. Have you noticed the first ladies aren't actually ladies? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, Donald Trump, you know, little trophy wife or whatever else and things. And I mean, just used and abused that woman and all the other women that he's had and everything. And you get Christians, oh, he's a godly man. No, he's not. So. <clears throat> the Trinity is not wrong based on what? Man's traditions? Well, okay, then you can go with man's traditions. How does a lie about Adolf Hitler? Okay. Um, are you denying the Holocaust, I guess? I'm assuming by that. I'm not saying that, you know, the exact numbers of, of the Jews that were killed in the Holocaust was exactly as they said or whatever. I think it, there could have even been more. I have no idea. But, uh, you know, Ben David Liu, it was a saved man, and he went through the death camps. And he got out of the death camps and he told about it. He lost his whole family. Like only his uncle survived. 
So you have a problem if you just want to go along with this. Oh, there is no you know Holocaust. There's no death camps. That stuff's nonsense. Okay, oh, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Colossians 3, 22. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Yeah, understand the context there. It's fearing God in the sense of I understand who God is and the mighty power of God and everything else, but also an understanding his love for you as well. It isn't fearing God in the sense of this weird Catholic thing of I have to abuse myself and beat myself or whatever else, and I have to continually just God will never love me or something, but it's not what it's saying in context there. You have to get that whole thing in context. The Trinity is taught throughout the Bible in various places. No, it's not. The word Trinity is not in there. You can't make it the most important doctrine of Scripture when it's not even in there. Um, John 5, consider John 5. Jesus teaches us the equality between the Father and the Son. Yes, that's the Godhead doctrine. I don't understand how people can't get that. I mean, okay, Trinitarian, golden arm there, Trinitarian. Man is made after the similitude of God. Just keep this thing basic. What is the similitude of God? Write it in the comments. I'll put your comment up. The word Bible isn't in the Bible either. Yes. So we can say Trinity and you can say Catholic or whatever. The concept of written scripture is in there. Bible, scripture, say either one. The concept of the Trinity appears nowhere in scripture. Okay. So. Is God sovereign? Where in that is that word in the Bible? Weak argument that the word Trinity is not in the Bible. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Can you see that God is sovereign in the scriptures? Yes. Um, and I don't use the word sovereignty of God. That's a Calvinistic thing, by the way. But um, where is there a, and I didn't, I asked you the question, by the way, do you believe that man is made after the similitude of God? What is the similitude of God? How, what is the makeup of God singular? Answer that question, please. Okay. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet equals the Trinity. Three separate persons. There you go. Absolutely right, sister. So the Bible does teach it. That the word Trinity is not there, but it should be for that one.
God gave me a Jesus sign. After following Jesus, I received the Holy Ghost. How isn't that the Trinity? Uh, God gave you a Jesus sign. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What's the Jesus sign? I seem to have missed that one in the scriptures. Run along, go someplace else. Yeah. Still waiting there from uh, what whoever that was earlier there. Uh, right there. Okay, it's not really answering my question. Where's the thing out there? Author of Hebrews in chapters one, chapter one quotes Psalm one or two written of YHWH. Oh boy, here we go. And applies it to Jesus. Okay, you're not answering my question. Man is made after the similitude of God. What is God? How does God consist? Body, soul, spirit. Should we read KJV with or without Apocrypha? Without. You don't need the Apocrypha. If you want to look at it and whatever, that's fine. Go ahead. But you don't need it. Answer this here quick. Are you, so are you saying God was working through King James Stewart? God can work through anybody. Okay, And the King James Bible is a nickname. It was called the Authorized Version. The Bible teaches that the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Okay, so don't, I'm going to reject the King James Bible because King James had issues and King James was this and King James. That's a stupid argument. Very stupid. Can you check out this channel, Don't Convert to Islam? I believe that this man is saved. The only issue is that he uses New King James Version sometimes. Can you try to reach out to him? Um, Really not a whole lot of time to be doing that, to be honest. You ever have a sign from God? No, I have the Bible. The scriptures are my authority. Who is King James to authorize a Bible? Uh, he's a king. <laughs> That's who he is. What kind of question is that? It's a wonderful thing that happened there. We don't have kings anymore. You say that all the people in England, they're not kings and queens. They're puppet show. <clears throat> what do you think about Pentecostal churches? Have you done a study on that denomination? I used to have one about the whole charismatic movement charismatic pentecostals the pentecostals came out of the methodist system um very wicked my grandparents were heavily involved in it my mother was raised in it it's extremely wicked stuff <clears throat> My wife drags me into this Presbyterian church. I feel like I'm walking in a club, short dresses, walking around with coffee, sickens me. When I mention something about it, she gets verbally combated. Well, then have some combat verbally. Put her in her place. Tell her what to do. If you're the husband, then uh, you make the stands. And you say, as, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, period. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. And I'm not going to be a bunch around a bunch of women that are immodestly dressed, period. To put your foot down. Well, I've experienced the Holy Ghost in your role. Okay, then go with your experiences. You'll fail. Do you have a favorite, Brian? Do you have a favorite book in the Bible? King, the, uh, King James Bible, yeah. The, uh, Book of Proverbs is my favorite book, and the New Testament would probably be Romans. 
helps on fasting, definitely a good thing to do. <clears throat> Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is an eternal sin. That's an unpardonable sin. Okay, and it is only possible when Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, is right there. Um, it's not possible if you make fun of somebody speaking in tongues or whatever else. They mocked them in Acts chapter 2 when they were speaking in tongues and they were not told that they were, you know, blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Okay, you need to get straightened out on that. Listen to my sermon I did on that. Uh, a lot of comments here. Uh, should get away from gaming first and foremost there. That's a problem. I don't get how people don't understand Jesus and God are one in the same. Do you really think it's impossible for God to be three entities when almost nothing is impossible for God? Well, God doesn't lie. So if he was three different entities, then he would tell us about his word. He hasn't, so there you go. Question. This might be a very stupid question, but can... Someone gets saved from a new version. This is not me trying to make an excuse for new versions. I hate all the new versions. No, I don't believe that they can get saved um, from a new version. They can ex get it saved from hearing the gospel. Um, they can hear it, and but God will lead them to the King James Bible. The evidence of salvation is somebody coming to the truth, a knowledge of the truth. And if you have somebody that says, well, I heard the gospel out of an NIV, and I still use the NIV and I hate the King James Bible. Well, then they didn't get saved. You say, well, I heard the gospel. Somebody quoted an NIV or something. I understood enough of the gospel and I got out of that church. and I, God finally led me to the King James Bible. Well, then, yeah, there was salvation there. That's how I would answer that. I mean, you can make a wordless book and explain the gospel to somebody. That doesn't mean the wordless book is God's word. Chris, like Brian said, put your foot down and use scripture to enforce your point. If she loves the Lord, she won't accuse you of the same. Absolutely. Amen. Sometimes the Lord puts you through a test as a husband where you have to calmly and without belittling her and getting into name calling and whatever else, just go to the scriptures and say, this is what the Bible says. This is what we're going to do. And it might lead to an argument, might lead to some tense moments and whatever else, but you have to get through that. What is spiritual and physical Israel? What are the conditional and unconditional covenants made with King David? Should we be in monarchy like the kingdom of the Bible? That seems more biblical. There's definitely some good things to kings, certainly. And America's little experiment of a republic. Um, it failed for democracy now and a democracy that's quickly being eroded and destroyed from within on purpose. So, yes, a monarchy in many ways would be better. Um, as far as the physical and spiritual Israel, uh, physical Israel are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Um, and spiritual would be those who are born again, born into Jesus Christ, receiving the spirit of adoption. That's there. And now you can have a Jew that is saved while they're kind of both spiritual and physical Israel. Um, <clears throat> conditional, unconditional covenants made with King David. That's a, 
whole big study I'd have to get into. Can't just answer it in the comment section thing here. But um, good question. Um, have you heard the CEO of Nokia say at Davos this year that by 2030, we won't have smartphones because the tech will be in our bodies? Um, no, I didn't hear that. I don't think I heard that. No, but not very surprising. Um, I could definitely see them trying to come out with stuff like that. Uh, again, it's just their way of wanting to make things happen and whatever else. They can't force any of that stuff. Okay. Um, how long until World War III, in your opinion? Good question. I don't know. It's one of the cards that they can play. Uh, certainly, I think that they're waiting right now with the whole thing of China and their invasion of Taiwan. Um, there could be uh, some stuff happening to America that would lead into it. They usually do that, um, make some kind of a Gulf of Tonkin or Pearl Harbor or some other staged event. And then, oh, we have to go to war now and, and whatever else. Um, I mean, we're already at World War, in World War III. If you look at economics and the food, you know, supply breakdown and, you know, the supply chain breakdown and whatever else, that's all tactics, tactics of warfare. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure of the theaters of operation where they're actually going to be doing the real warfare or whatever. I don't know. Good question. Very good question. Um, I've heard 501c3 churches can't expose the Pope due to political affiliation, true or false. Um, I've never heard that per se, so I'm not sure. Uh, that's an interesting thought. I don't know. <clears throat> Is there any books that you would recommend reading? Um, well, other than the King James Bible, um, oh boy, <laughs> that's a pretty tough question for me to answer. Uh, I have a lot of different books that I've read that have been a real good blessing to me. Um, anything from a older preacher from back in the 1800s or early 1900s, that's pretty good stuff. The Pilgrim's Progress is good. Fox's Book of Martyrs is good. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of ones out there. Just read. Um, Question, my mother-in-law is Catholic. Husband is lost. How do I honor her when she visits us? I mean, she comes over and starts problems in my husband. Okay. Uh, well, sometimes you have to understand the whole thing of honoring father and mother. Doesn't mean that you give in to them. And sometimes you have to just simply say, don't bring that Catholic stuff in here. And, and don't make problems and whatever else. Um, you have to say you, you need to go away sometimes um that would be my advice on that so i have my own family issues to deal with and, and uh you can't always be 100 percent 100 percent respectable to your parents if they're going against the scriptures
Okay. How do you feel about doomsday prepping? Should we be doing this or endure the hardships during tribulations? Well, I think that you should, if you have some wisdom, you should say, okay, there's some bad stuff coming. I should prepare for that. Um, doomsday prepping, as in going through the time of Jacob's trouble? No, that's a problem. Um, don't waste your time on that. You can't save up seven years of storage foods and whatever else. That's not going to happen. Brian, how, can you tell us how to deal with unsaved family members who feels like we aren't truly saved because we refuse to be around them or speak to them until they get saved? It's been really hard. Um, I mean, we're, we're in a situation here where we're pretty much just cut off from the rest of our family members. I just had a birthday here three days ago. I had two of my five siblings or, uh, well, yeah, I guess five siblings now five total children but now i learned i have another brother <laughs> since my dad's funeral and um and another brother too which i don't even know who he is so um but i'm you know they don't contact us or whatever else and my wife's siblings they don't bother with us either um so uh it's just part of the thing of being saved you know I, unfortunately i wish it could just be hey we get along great with our family members um, my way that I handle family members at this point in time is deal strictly with worldly things and be kind to them and just say, okay, Lord, as I'm talking to them or whatever, just say, Lord, bring in some kind of spiritual thing. If you want me to say it, if not, then it's just quick to the point. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Weather's been good here, whatever else. That's about it. I'm here for you if you need help or something like that. But if you want to bring up religious stuff, it's just going to go into an argument and I'm not going to back down. You're not going to back down. So why bother? <clears throat> okay. Let me just say it this way. My words are not contradictory unless you assume God cannot be a, tri a triune nature. You have no scripture for your stand. Okay. None. The Trinity is a satanic concept from philosophical origin. I've proved it in my videos. I'm not a heretic for saying that. You are adding to the scriptures. You are a heretic for believing in the Trinity. Now, if you want to keep staying here and making problems, you will be blocked. Right? It's as simple as that. There is God the Father. That's in scripture. God the Son is not. There's no scripture for that. God the Holy Spirit. There's no scripture for that. That's three different unique titles for God. No scripture for God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no divine essence. You are dealing with a man-made satanic doctrine that the Catholic Church has put people to death over. So if you're going to continue with that, you're kicked off of this channel, period. The Bible teaches the Godhead doctrine. Man is made after the similitude of God. God is a body, soul, spirit. There's the three in one. Body, soul, spirit. Man has a body, soul, spirit made after the similitude of God. It's that simple. So stop the Trinitarian hogwash or I'll kick you off of here. Do you understand? Okay. Don't be a stupid heretic all of your life. You have no scripture. Quit acting like you do. <laughs> Okay. What is the Godhead doctrine? It's on my channel. The Godhead appears three times in the King James Bible. In the Godhead, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily in Jesus Christ. He is completely God, holy God. The Father is in him as the soul. The Holy Ghost is in him as the spirit. Lost people don't get it. All right. Did I miss anything?
Okay. Okay. I I probably so did you miss my question? Yeah, I probably did. Um, please write any other questions that you have here. When the sacrifices were made in the Old Testament, how were they killed? Beheading or slit throat? Uh, not sure. I'd have to study that more before I could give you a real good answer on that one. Um, <clears throat> Brian, there's this guy named Paul Washer. I know who he is. And he's one of those carnival preachers, but sits with James White and that one preacher with the skinny jeans. I have friends being deceived by Jim. Yeah, um, those guys, they're all just showmen. Is all they are they'll say some really good stuff sometimes but that's how they draw you in they're calvinists they are new versionists they have no final authority on earth other than themselves and their own opinions um it's a shame ah i missed it hold on a second here i'll get back to you in a minute Question, can you tell us what evils Germany was doing before Hitler came to power? Yeah, they were very much into um, lasciviousness, a lot of, of very wicked practices and things like that. It was the same kind of roaring 20s period that we had here in America, the flapper era and a lot of that stuff, um, empowerment of women and all these other things. <clears throat> I actually went to an army uh, surplus place, and there was this old magazine in German. Uh, from right before the Nazi regime took power, and I was shocked. I mean, I, I picked it up, and I, it was all in German. I thought, hey, this is interesting. Picked it up and opened it up, and there was, you know, topless women in clubs back in the 1920s in Germany. So, you know, that's, oh, okay, whoops, I put that away. I didn't even know what it was. So yeah, they were doing some really wicked things back then. Um, question, my cousin accepts Jesus. Her husband is Hindi. I told her to stay away from church buildings. I told her to be a reflection of Jesus to her husband. Yeah, best thing that you can do. Um, <clears throat> question thing is. Can anyone truly feel that the Holy Spirit performed baptism? Anyone that's genuinely saved can perform a baptism. Yes. What is your take on what the mark of the beast is? Implantable microchip of some kind, but they could come out with some kind of a different technology or whatever. I don't know. That's an interesting thing. We can't tell right now. It's, we're still not there. Um, how can we message Brian privately? Uh, that's very difficult because... I used to do emailing and there were times I'd spend seven or eight hours a day emailing and um, I'd get hundreds of emails a day. And that was back when I was just getting started. I, so that's why I had to hide my email address online. So <clears throat> um, send me a letter through the postal system. I know it's slow and everything else, but that's about the best thing. Okay. <clears throat> question the Essenes teachings Gnostic are deceiving many professing Christians not many are exposing this can you please do a expose on this well I have actually talked about the thing of you know Gnostic will worshipers they worship their own will I do have a study on that that might not be exactly what you're thinking about but um 
Um, we are not a part of going through the mark of the beast, correct? That is correct. Absolutely. If you were, then the Holy Spirit could be proved to be a liar because Ephesians chapter uh, 1 and chapter 4 both say that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are saved. When you get born again, you cannot lose your salvation right now. In the time of Jacob's trouble, somebody can. Um, and I've done whole studies on that. Can't get into all the scriptures on that right now, but that's what the Bible teaches. So. Do you have any videos on casting out evil spirits? No, I don't. Um, I do have one on the thing of the fake, you know, exorcisms. I do have one on that. Oh, that's a good one. You should you should watch that one if you have any questions about it. I get into a little bit of the thing of casting out devils in that. But <clears throat> what are your thoughts on Martin Luther King, uh, Jr.? Uh, very wicked man, communist, fornicator, plagiarist, everything else. I uh, don't think too highly of him. I mean, just a simple speech he gives, you know, that uh, we all need to come together, Protestants and Catholics. Uh, no. <laughs> that disqualified him right there from me taking him serious. Have you ever considered giving up citizenship to Babylon? I'm not a citizen of Babylon. I'm a citizen of America. Okay. I'm not connected to Rome. In any way so <clears throat> Brian why doesn't any King James preachers acknowledge the Geneva Bible like you and why do you think the KG removed the scripts that are in the Geneva about the Vatican um, well I have to do some study on that to be very honest um, I don't have a rule, you know, I I have a Geneva Bible, but I haven't compared it with the King James Bible, so I can't really comment. I don't feel comfortable commenting on something I haven't genuinely studied. Um, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. In other words, question, I am a city dweller and not even remotely prepared for the coming famine. What would you recommend as a starter? Um, well, if there's a way you can get out of the city, <laughs> I'd make things easier. Um, but just pray about it. Um, ask what ask the Lord what he would have you to do. There are some good things that you can get like oatmeal or dried beans or pasta or whatever that you can get some of that and kind of set it off to the side and prepare, you know, to go without food for some time. Um, that's something that I would recommend. Well, I'm going to have to get going here soon. I think uh, my voice is not getting any better. <clears throat> Okay. Question, thoughts on Quakers and their video titled How Jesus Affirms My Queerness. Uh, all these man-made groups, be it Quakers, Lutherans, Methodists, you know, the Baptists, whatever else, they've all strayed so far from when they were originally founded. Uh, Quakers back when they were originally founded, you know, um, Probably had some decent things about them, but honestly, now I have no idea about that. If they're coming out with stuff like that, Jesus affirms my queerness and eh, whatever. Um, you know, we need to start taking stands against mental illness. Somebody comes out and says, "Yeah, I was born a man, but I think I'm a woman now." Well, you're mentally ill. Uh, I'm not. I'm not okay with that. I'm not going to respect you. No, there's no respect there. Uh, I used to be a you know, I've always been attracted to men and I'm a man or something, you know, no, 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 you're mentally ill. That's you're a pervert, plain and simple. And just say what needs to be said and let God take care of the rest. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> Are you here every Sunday morn? No, I'm not. Um, sometimes I'll do other. I have a you know, old recording, old sermon, or I'll do two videos and have one released on Sunday morning. 
this one I just kind of thought I'd, you know, take some time to answer some questions, but. Question, how were Adam and Eve and their children able to procreate without the issues of inbreeding? Well, because when you first get pure copies of something, they are going to be able to make copies from the copies and not have problems, is how I would answer that. God had that all worked out. Um, just how it works. It's kind of like saying, how could they build without electricity? Well, <laughs> there are ways to do it, you know. Um, how could they do certain things without, you know, what, well, things that are different, that are in the past are different than they are today. So. What are your thoughts about everybody that's teaching now on YouTube that Paul's a false apostle, a servant of Satan? Yeah, I did a whole study on that. It's a bunch of nonsense. It's another one of those things that you just shake your head and go crazy. Why did Kent Hoven went posty? Why did he go to become a post tripper? For the same reason a lot of them do. They they don't believe, you know, they put they make a profession of faith, but then the Lord doesn't do certain things for them, and then they they get persecuted and they say, you know, persecution rises because of the word by and by they're offended. And then they leave. Uh, that's what's going on. A lot of people, they, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Jesus is coming. And of all this stuff, you know, we'll be seeing him soon. And then he doesn't come in their time period. They start to get persecuted because of the word. And then they fall away. That's why Ken Hogan did that. <clears throat> How does one new to faith cram this all in? That's a very good question. Thank you for that question. Uh, uh, it takes years. The Bible believing movement is very complicated, extremely complicated, and it is going to take a long time. That's why the Bible lists two different types of spiritual instruction, so to speak. The as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Then Paul also talks about strong meat, which belongeth to them of full age. Getting the words mixed up there a little bit. But you have two things. You have milk and you have meat. I did an audio sermon on this years ago. It's not here on YouTube anymore. Uh, I don't think it is anyhow. Somebody might have it on another channel. But remember milk doctrine. God's word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Go through the simple basic things. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. You have to rightly divide this book. There are some things in the Bible, Old Testament, that don't line up with the New Testament. Okay? Remember the simple milk things. You get those down and you make your diet about milk for a while. And then you start to study the meat. What about this? What about that? All the questions that people ask me. You know, some of this really detailed stuff. And your new Christians just go, oh, man, I'm getting a headache. Yeah, you can't give a big piece of meat to a little baby who's nursing. You can't. They need that milk. Okay, so. It comes in time, but <clears throat> you always have to remember if you start to get choked up on meat, then you have to go back to the milk and see if it lines up. Meat doctrine never contradicts milk doctrine. Okay, hopefully that made sense. <clears throat> Can you believe people still fall for the Mandela effect? Yeah, people are gullible. They get taken advantage of. Oh, God's word has been changed. Oh, no. <laughs> have you discussed the Mandela effect? Yes, I have. I have a couple of videos on it, actually, how it ties into the occult and Satanism. It was a little mind control tactic put out by a bunch of witches to mess Christians up.
two whole videos on. Are predators heretics? Absolutely, yes. Yes. You believe everything happened, you know, in the first century. I mean, preterism is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. I mean, you know, and uh, people, I was expecting a much more thorough discourse. You don't need to do a thorough discourse when it's a stupid concept. Everything happened in the first century. What? <laughs> you know, oh, there's no, the mark of the beast technology is not coming in here. We're not heading, heading into the end times. The end times have already come and gone. Third of the trees burned up. Well, that's just symbolic or something. <laughs> you know. So, is it a sin to eat blood and meat as per book of Acts? Um, yes. I mean, in terms of its bloody coming out and whatever else, you know, I believe that you should cook the blood out of it. <clears throat> Did Jesus bind Satan not for a thousand years in the, in the bottomless pit? No, he didn't. And it's an angel that comes down, puts a chain around him, and casts him down into there. That has not happened yet. I mean, if you think Satan's in the bottomless pit for the last 1,000 years, it's actually 2,000 years, kind of symbolically. Yeah, problems. <clears throat> Should a saved man leave his lost wife if she refuses to be saved, if she continues to fight you? A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. First Corinthians chapter 7, look it up. Is coffee a form of sorcery or a drug? Um, no, I don't believe it is. Caffeine that's in it, if you abuse it and use it too much and it starts to alter your mind or something, well then maybe. <clears throat> are devils and fallen angels the same beings? No, I don't believe that they are. Don't take Revelation too literal, buddy. Okay. Uh, block user. Bye-bye. Trinitarian, preterist, you need to get saved. Goodbye. Can't take Revelation literal. Okay, then I guess I can't believe in heaven. You know, these these people are one big benefit to all of those out there that are still watching um, is uh, coming here to this channel. You will meet some of the weirdest heretics. I said it in that video that we watched at the beginning of this that I have a talent for drawing in weird people. I do. <laughs> You'll understand uh, a lot of different heresies out there because of the weird people that come along. So, <clears throat> so, well, that's going to be it. I guess I'm going to quit now. We're just about two hours into this thing. So, um, before my voice is totally gone. <laughs> uh, It, it jumbles my mind after a while. Uh, you have to answer so many different questions and so many different things. Huh. So. Yeah. All right, just reading some of the other comments there, but that's going to be it for this uh, study here. Um, going back to the whole thing on, of me preaching in church buildings, you could hear what I did. I lied a couple times, knowing that I was lying to keep the whole church building thing going. Oh, they're infiltrating churches and there aren't many good churches out there and whatever else. I knew better at the time. I was in sin the whole time I was in that Second Baptist Church. And the Lord used it as a time to really kick me and 
knocked me around and everything else. It was a rather poor thing to do early on in my marriage. If I could go back in time, I would have never gone there. It was a terrible mistake that I made and God chastened me for it. So that's why I recommend people get away from the church buildings. I do have a lot of experience in them. Um, they're not scriptural. So, but uh, hope everybody has a good week and uh, good day today. Do something with your family. Read the word. Sing some hymns. I have to go get something to drink so my voice comes back. <laughs> but uh, uh, so just to have to say this whole thing here. Um, I said I had to do some plumbing work earlier this morning. Uh, old bathtub in this place here. The drain goes down about an, maybe an inch and a half and then goes 90 degrees to the right and then 90 degrees down and then over into this you know drain type of thing before it goes down into the septic system and you know my wife has long hair she washes her hair and you know it gets down into that the whole thing gets stuck and there's just no way to take all the brass stuff apart and everything else so <laughs> older houses or something else some of the stuff people used to do and, and whatever there's there's so many issues with this place that we found you know <clears throat> yeah we didn't pay much money for it but there's a reason why so um please do keep us in your prayers and uh i guess that's going to be it um so yeah get an auger yeah well i there's a actually a little cable like wire thing in there and uh that was down actually in the basement coiled up and i thought hey that might work as sort of an auger type of deal the angles are so sharp it's it's nearly impossible to get the thing down in through there. I was trying this little cable, trying to get it down in. And I thought if I can just feed it down through and in through this way and whatever else I can, you know, put something, attach something on the upper end, like a rag or whatever else, then yank it down through and clean it all out. Um, I couldn't even get the thing even close to getting down through this mess. It's real sharp angles and whatever else. It's terrible. I'd have to take the whole thing apart. Uh, so yeah uh so now i have to go see if it works if it doesn't then i have to take the whole thing apart but <laughs> um can you reach both ends uh no it's like i said it goes down through the tub over 90 degrees it goes about six inches over so about like that and then it goes down into a down spout and then over into this like the clean out thing it's not the s trap but it's sort of a like a kind of like it would be the s trap like where the water goes down in and then at the bottom there's a drain i was hoping that i could open that up normally you do and then the hair or whatever's clogging the thing is in there and you can pull it out but there was nothing in that it was all up in the 90 degree deal and whatever else so um i don't know we'll see if I have to take the whole thing apart, I'm not going to be too happy about it. But um, so, all right, that's going to be it. Thank you to everybody out there for your prayers. Um, and uh, we'll see you in future studies. And uh, I guess that's it. So have a good day. Stick with the word of God.